The world is in peril. Plastic is clogging up the oceans and rivers of the world, and tiny microplastic pieces linger in the very air that we breathe. Plastic can come in big or small sizes, but sometimes people just disregard them and drop them. And global warming is a big factor as sea levels are rising and ice caps are melting, the global temperature is slowly but surely increasing. So what can be done? Well, there have been various projects to help stop plastic pollution and global warming and climate change. I recently teamed up with a group called Beach Guardian, who worked to protect the, um, the shorelines and the coastlines of, uh, of Great Britain from plastic pollution. And I actually did a beach clean up in Cornwall in my summer holidays with them. So I'll show you that one now. Today we're going to be doing a beach clean in partnership with Beach Guardian. Today, conservation company Beach Guardian have challenged me to find plastic in the Triana Bay. But if you are noisy, you'll oh never my gosh, that's such a big piece of plastic! Yeah, like it, yeah. so, yeah, oh my right gosh, right. this could have gone in the sea. It could be seriously damaged sea life. So we're going to. Uh, not sure. What, we, we need to take off the lid of the bucket for this one. It's oh, such a big piece of plastic, and I'm shocked of how this has made its way onto Triana Bay. Absolutely shocked. Right, we've got a lot of plastic here in this one spot. We've got a sweet wrapper. We've got some, I've seen some images on the internet of turtles being stuck in this. They've been tangled in this in the sea. Pop that into the box. We've also got a, another wrapper from what looks to be a pack. And last but not least, we've got this purple, I'm not sure what this is, but it's quite a big piece of plastic, so can't let that get to the sea or that could cause, cause some serious damage to the fish. Oh my, this, there are two massive pieces of clear plastic. They're really, really easy to miss. Like, these, this... These two pieces are massive. They look like they could have been off a plastic jug or something like that, but they're definitely going inside our tub. Oh my gosh, that's a massive piece of plastic. That is, that could like kill a fish, honestly. Nothing in there. Nothing out, oh. Okay. That's not meant to be there. That's another piece of plastic. That could suffocate something. I'm shocked about, just in this little vicinity here, there are two pieces of plastic, a small one like this, but a big one like this. I'm just absolutely shocked how many pieces of plastic there actually are. This is an ice cream tub. Why don't people just take these and put them in the bin? There are bins just up there. Why don't they just walk and put it in? Why do they have to dump it on the floor for all this to pick up? We've collected lots of plastic today. This is the final result of our cleanup. Now, there's a lot of a mixture of rubbish. We've got wrappers like this little bits of plastic plastic places there little bits like this wrappers you've got a string off a balloon with a little bit of balloon on the end which is extremely harmful to the environment we've got plastic ice cream tubs and this is totally unacceptable so just to give you an idea this is what would have happened to the plastic if we hadn't have acted today
Any more buckets? Thank you. Okay, drop it in there. Thank you. my beach clean up in partnership with company Beach Guardian uh, and you can follow them on Facebook and Instagram because they have accounts there um, and yeah this is this has really inspired me to do some more beach clean ups and things like that to help with stopping plastic reaching the ocean and then it'll just cause havoc in the marine environment I just feel like I've really done something there I made a difference to the environment I've cleaned up so much plastic from this beach and the rest of the beach cleaner up have too. And I think it's it's really important that more beach cleanups like that are happening across the country and across the world because action needs to be taken. So here is an image of me with the organiser of this group. The woman on the right is Emily Stevenson and her dad's on the left. Emily's actually got a spot on BBC South West every Thursday evening at 6.30pm which will be basically just talking about all the things that have been happening during the week concerning Beach Guardian and also her efforts of tackling plastic pollution. Now the last news show that she did, she actually broadcast live on the Beach Guardian Facebook page and this is what she had to say about me. We can tackle this, it is doable. Super, well a final comment, we've had somebody writing into us saying my son Lewis was so inspired from meeting you on the beach, now we're back home in Manchester, he's carrying on your ethos and doing a video for his school project based on the work he did with you on the beach. That's just amazing. Isn't that great? So, That's just all I can hope for with this is to just inspire not just young people but anybody that mm -hmm. I get the chance to engage with to make changes in their own life. You know, it starts as a conversation down on the beach and then they can, you know, channel it through the what they do in their day-to-day mm -hmm. -day life and yeah. it's just very inspiring for me to hear that and it makes me incredibly um, determined to just keep going. And whilst we're on holiday in the summer we visited the Eden Project and they had the new Earth Story exhibition on. Earth Story was a temporary exhibition for 2019 telling the story of the Earth and its species. It had some great encouraging words about all aspects of the environment. But I really enjoyed looking at this great piece of art of a jellyfish made up of plastic. The message of this was to show a jellyfish being made up of plastic that we found in the ocean to show how plastic impacts on our marine environment. Some people are making a difference, such as Costa Rica, who are leading the way in conservation. Costa Rica, a vibrant Central American country, is leading the way in creating a sustainable future for all of its inhabitants and they are real world models in conservation. 26% of the country is protected and over 50% of it is rainforest. Costa Rica is home to 5% of the world's biodiversity. In 1948, the Costa Rican government invested in education, health and pensions instead of military. In the 1980s, environmental science was made a priority in Costa Rican schools. In the mid-1980s, a network of national parks and the National Biodiversity Institute were set up. Locals were recruited to conserve their homeland. And in the 1990s, Costa Rican government halted deforestation, which is really what a lot of countries should be doing, including Brazil, home to the Amazon rainforest. And in 30 years, Costa Rican rainforests have doubled in the country, which is absolutely phenomenal. And I think these are really leading the way in conservation. And these are really, this is a country to be looked up to by others. The Eden Project is a very, very inspiring place for me. It was the place I was most excited to visit on my holiday because I love looking around the biomes, all the different flowers, and I really want to stand up against plastic pollution and other kinds of pollution, including global warming, climate change and poverty, habitat loss, because I am really against 
all of those and I really want to do something to help. I want to be a guardian of the future. And also, whilst we're on holiday, we saw this great thing that had actually been set up by the Eden Project. It was called Turvy the Turtle. And it says on the label, Turvy the Turtle loves plastic bottles. Please feed him. And that's an image of me putting the plastic bottle into the turtle's mouth that I'd already drunk. Because I think that's brilliant. As it gives you a good place to put your plastic bottles. But it also has a poignant meaning to it as well as it shows that if you dump your plastic, you're basically feeding it to the turtles, which I found quite poignant. But this is just another thing that's being done to help with stopping plastic pollution. But unfortunately, plastic isn't the only problem that we face today on Earth. Global warming and climate change are still affecting us. The temperature of the Earth on average has risen 1.9 degrees Fahrenheit since 1880. The Arctic ice minimum is falling 12.8% per decade. We're losing 413 gigatons of ice sheet each year from the poles and the sea levels rising 3.3 millimetres annually. This has to stop if you want to protect the future of our planet. I really hope that you enjoyed my short film. I hope that you took something away from it and learned that we need to empower the changed in young people. As the great David Attenborough said, if humans disappeared overnight, the world would probably be a better place. Thanks for watching.